Paths to Contemplation by Yves Ragoon, Jesuit Part 1. Paths Chapter 4. The Word and the Life Sacred Scripture reveals to us the Word and Life. Life is that mysterious, inexplicable force that animates everything that exists, the whole universe, mankind and all living creatures. In order to reveal this life and to give us access to it, we were given the Word. Christ, who is the Word and the life, came to invite us to believe in the Word so that he might put us in closer contact with life. Life is for living and can find no other language but itself to express it. To express itself. That is why Christ invites us not so much to understand life as to experience it. If only you recognised God's gift, our Lord said to the Samaritan woman, and who it is that is asking you for a drink, you would have asked him instead, and he would have given you living water. John chapter 4 verse 10. The word came to invite us to life. He described it for us, showed it to us, and made us understand it insofar as human language can make the reality comprehensible. But to the extent that man has not experienced life in himself, he cannot understand all that the word wishes to reveal to him. Our religion is not primarily a religion of knowledge, but one of life. The divine life does not remain in God, goes out from him with the gift that God makes of himself. This life comes from God as a great river that supports and irrigates all human activity. This life nourishes all the cells of the spiritual organism, but no one can master it except Christ who is both life and word. This divine life animates the church, and the church dispenses it throughout its whole liturgical body. The great mystery of the Christian life is this divine life that animates it. Christ possesses this divine life in its fullness because he is God, and he gives it to men who receive it and make it their own insofar as their capa as insofar as their capacity permits them but this life remains like a great mysterious river unfathomable and boundless so deep and so immense that man is as lost in it as the tiny fish is lost in the current of the sea that carries it along it is a boundless flood that carries us in the great silence of its holy, divine immensity. Without him who is both word and life, we would be always borne along without ever knowing what stream was sweeping us forward. But with him, with Christ, the incarnate word, we receive light. In him, life is expressed in a word, which is also pronounced and manifested in the Gospels. Without this human word, we would possess life, but would not know whence it came or whither it was bringing us. Without the word given to us in the Bible, we would be like so many men who feel the divine presence in them but to express it in language that is little more than the product of their imagination. 
This is the explanation for so many aberrations outside Christianity and unfortunately also within Christianity itself. Men heard life itself speak and their testimony leads us to its source. We can understand St John's exaltation as he wrote at the beginning of his first epistle. This is what we proclaim to you, what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked upon and our hands have touched. We speak of the word of life. This life became visible. We have seen and bear witness to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life that was present to the Father and became visible to us. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim in turn to you, so that you may share life with us. First letter of John, chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. The divine life has its own mysterious language, which the words of sacred scripture explain to us. They show us the workings of grace in our souls. It is true that God shows himself in a thousand ways, in nature and in our humanity. Often he shows himself to the soul without any apparent relationship to the revelation which he made to the Jewish people and later to the whole world in Christ. This does not invalidate the revelation made in the incarnate word, without which human intelligence would be like the needle of a compass spinning around by a magnetic field. Man's mind would no longer be able to understand and express the experience which it has had of God. That is why, in the history of the religious life, revelation in Christ remains the definitive pole that orient, orientates every other experience and every other partial revelation. Everything has been said to us in Christ because in him, God has given us everything that can be received by a creature. And the remainder is shown to us in the infinity of the divine mystery. Anyone who wants to set out in search of God has a sure guide, one who is the truth and the life and the way that leads thereto. No other spiritual guide is able, or ever will be able, to do more than point out the road, or a part of the road, since, unlike Christ, no guide is the road from beginning to end. Yet although human guides are only guides and nothing more, it is usually necessary to have one. Ordinarily, God does not wish those who are searching for him to set out alone over the steep paths that lead to the depths of his mystery. If you want to begin the search for God in contemplation, take up the scriptures. Study them under the direction of the church and choose a director who will keep you company on your journey. The words of scripture, those of the church and those of your spiritual director, will be your light as you go in search of life.